Hey guys, it's your pal Dave from notesandvolts.com and this month we got a really fun project. We're going to take a Teensy 3.2 microcontroller and turn it into a really cool DIY synth. To do this project, you're going to need the following. A Teensy 3.2 microcontroller, a Teensy audio board, and also two of these double-decker headers that you can also buy at the Teensy website. These are going to allow us to mount the audio board to the Teensy and leave a little space in between and also leaves the pins on the bottom so if in the future you want to uh, breadboard it or attach some other components to it, you can easily do that. But first of all, we're going to need to assemble this. All right, let's begin assembly. First, grab your three components, the Teensy 3.2, the audio board, and the double-decker headers. Next, grab your soldering iron and some solder. And you'll want to use a soldering iron with a fairly sharp tip since the pads on the Teensy are very small. It's very important to make sure that the pins are straight when you solder them to the Teensy. So to make sure that they are, we're going to use a breadboard to line everything up. Now insert the short side of the headers into the bottom of the audio board like this. Now place the Teensy on the long side of the pins making sure that the labels on the audio board and the Teensy board match up. Now you want to place the whole assembly on your breadboard and push it in. This will keep everything straight when you solder. Now we'll solder the top of the board. I like to start with the four outer pins and then work my way around. Be very careful that you don't bridge two pins with solder and also make sure you don't touch any of the components on the board with the soldering iron. Now I'll carefully remove the assembly from the breadboard by slowly rocking it back and forth until it comes out. The last thing we need to do is flip the board over and solder the Teensy on the bottom. And that's it, we are done. All right, so now that you have your Teensy board all soldered up and ready to go, we're going to run a simple test to make sure you've got it working. Okay, so if you've never used uh, Teensy before, it is very similar to an Arduino and uses the same Arduino software for programming. But what you're going to need to do is install the Teensy Duino software that lets you program the Teensy. So you want to first go to uh, pjrc.com and then go to the Teensy tab and then go to getting started. Uh, there's a good tutorial about how to actually upload the code to the Teensy. And if you go to this link, you can get the Teensy loader for your operating system and just follow the instructions, install it. And one suggestion, I would suggest you just select all the libraries to install. There's a lot of really great libraries in here and it's easier just to install them now than to do it later. Do the installation and check it all out. And just try to upload the Blink program to your Teensy first, like a very simple program. 
and that will make sure your tool chain is correct. Okay, so once you've got that done, you're going to want to go here. So pjrc.com slash teensy slash GUI. And you'll get to this audio library uh, system designer tool. This tool is really great and makes using the audio library a lot simpler. So let's build up a very simple circuit with an oscillator and see if we can test this thing out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the output section. Now if you put your mouse over each thing, you can actually get a little uh, info on it. But we want to use this I2S output device. And that's the audio board that we have for our Teensy. Just click it and drag one of those onto the screen. And you notice it has two inputs which are left and right stereo. Now we're going to scroll down to the synth section and we're going to take a waveform object. And you can see the waveform object lets you generate all the standard waveforms, sine, saw, reverse saw, uh, square, triangle, and what have you. So we'll drag one of those. And that's going to be our sound source, our oscillator. Now finally, we need to go all the way down and you see the control section, we need to drag one of these, SGTL 5000. And you can see uh, by the info card, uh, the SGTL 5000 is the chip on the audio shields. And <clears throat> we just drag that onto the screen. We're not going to connect it to anything, there's no connections available, it just needs to be there. Now we'll actually make some connections. So Touch this little uh, point at the end of waveform and drag a line and connect it to this upper input. And then go to the same thing, drag a second line and connect it to the lower input. So we're taking this mono source and we're going to split it into stereo. And that's it. Now all you have to do is go to export and you'll get all the code you need to initialize these objects. And just copy and you can paste it in your Arduino software. I've already done this for you, so follow the link in the description to download this test program. It's called Teensy Synth Part 1. Open it up in your Arduino software. Now, all this is the code we generated in the, in the system design tool. And I could just replace this. I'll, I'll delete it just to show you, and I'll replace it with what we came up with. And we'll even kind of follow, follow the logic here. So you can see we have a, uh, an audio synth waveform object, which is this guy here. We have our audio output, I2S, which is this guy here. We have two patch cables, audio connection, right, patch cord one, which is from waveform one, which is this output, to I2S one, which is this input. And then we have a second patch cord, uh, patch cord two. It's automatically named by the tool, going from waveform one to I2S input one. So we have one into input zero, one into input one. And then finally we have our audio control module, which is just required to uh, allow the software to talk to the chip on your audio board. Now if we go down to the setup, so the setup I've just got a simple serial begin, uh, not really necessary. Audio memory, you need this. Um, and here we're enabling our objects, okay? So we basically got our, our uh, SGTL, we're enabling it, and then we're setting an initial volume level to 0.32. So this, this range can go from zero, which is no volume, to one, which is full volume, all right? So we've got about 30% volume there. Then we're taking our waveform object, and we're, we're uh, assigning it a sawtooth waveform type. We're setting an initial amplitude of 
seven five once again this goes from zero to one um, so that's about 75 percent we've got a frequency of 50 that's 50 Hertz which is a very low tone and we've got a pulse width of uh, 0.15 once again that goes from zero to one so if we just had this um, we would actually hear that 50 Hertz tone coming from the board but I wanted to make it a little more interesting for you guys so uh, what we did is we've got uh, a for loop we're taking our frequency variable from 50 Hertz to 500 Hertz and we're just kind of uh, updating and increasing it so you're going to get a raising kind of tone and I've got a little delay to kind of slow the ramp if I didn't have that delay it would just be you know so fast so we're kind of slowing it down a bit so you can hear a gradual ramp up uh, and that's it that's our, our test um, circuit you may also notice that it's included the uh, audio tool has included an SD card library and a flash library which we're not really using but you know it's fine we'll just uh, we're not gonna get rid of it we'll leave it okay so now we're ready to upload the code what we need to do is plug in USB into the TNC and also an audio cable uh, a 1 8 inch stereo audio cable into our audio boards jack you'll need to plug this into a powered speaker a mixer you know uh, some kind of amplifying device and let's just upload so what we need to do is we'll go to tools we'll make sure our board type is set correctly TNC 3.2 and we can leave uh, the type of serial leave everything else uh, as standard you know make sure that your port is correct so first of all uh, a quick tip on using the the TNC loader program if you click verify first it will test compile the code see if you got any errors but it will also pop up the uh, TNC loader window and even though this is a small program it's taking a while to uh, compile because of all the audio library things that are going on in the background so now it's it's compiled zero errors everything's good and you'll get your little teensy uh, programmer window this is the teensy loader program now go to the upload button and you see we're compiling a sketch and it's uploading and you notice we got a little message here it says teensy did not respond uh, to uh, to the request please press the program mode button on your TNC to upload the sketch okay and that is located in here it's this little white button on the TNC board itself and because we used our, our tall headers I can kind of get my finger in there and there you go seems to be working fine so there's our little ramp up tone but it proves that your soldering job worked, the TNC is working fine, your tool chain works. And now we're ready to go on to some more complex stuff in the next part. Alright guys, there you go. So you've got a working TNC audio board now. And in the next section, we're going to look at how we can use software to change parameters on this. And we're going to make a more complex synth circuit with a few more oscillators, some mixers a envelope and filters so until then i'd like to once again thank my patreon supporters who always appear up here uh, without them none of this would be possible so thanks so much to them and uh, i will see you next time <laughs>